This is TOS National News on your Digital Affairs Pan African News Network, TOS TV. I am Adesu LC. Annually, February 4 is marked as World Cancer Day, and this year's event is themed I Am and I Will. In light of this, medical practitioners we spoke to Daily Trust revealed that there are no more than three functional radiotherapy centers for cancer treatment in Nigeria. Speaking about these challenges, an oncology consultant at Amin Kano Teaching Hospital. Dr. Mohamed Inoua Mustafa identified lack of radiotherapy machines as a monumental concern that requires urgent attention from both the federal and state governments. He said 70% of cancer patients need radiotherapy treatment, adding that Kano has no single radiotherapy machine, while the whole country has only three centers with functional radiotherapy machines, and they are in Abuja, Lagos, and Enugu. Based on the International Atomic Energy Management Agency recommendation, any community that has 250,000 people is supposed to have a machine. So if you look at Kano, based on our population, we're supposed to have not less than 20 radiotherapy machines, and we have none. With over 200 million people, we have only three functional machines for the whole country, and this is terrible, he said. He therefore appealed to the government to put up a radiotherapy machine in each state so as to address the growing concern of cancer deaths from poor treatment. The Ogun State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Tomi Koka, has said that 80% of people residing in the state are at the risk of contracting neglected tropical disease, NTD. This she disclosed at a news conference to mark the 2021 World NTD Day, stressing that people living in rural areas are more vulnerable. According to her, 1.4 million school-aged children are at the risk of schizomiasis and the disease con a disease rather contactable from dog urine and soil transmitter helminthiasis. The commissioner equally disclosed that each local government in the state was endemic for one or more NTDs, adding that Abelkuta North and Odeda local government areas had the highest prevalence of some of the diseases in Nigeria. Koka expressed regrets that Nigeria was West Africa's most affected country with about 25% of the NTDs. To tackle the disease and avert future outbreak, Koka stressed that a government will solicit support from private partners to curtail the spread of the disease in the state. The Federal Capital Territory Task Force on Enforcement of COVID-19 Protocols on Wednesday disrupted the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund Promotion Examination. The task force, led by the head of media and enlightenment, Ikaro Atta, visited the exam venue at the NSITF staff fled the hall to avoid arrest. Those in charge of the examination were said to have absconded, leaving their cars behind, one of which was towed away by the task force. As I said, they received calls from some staff members that they are not comfortable with the arrangements made by the management team. He added that the exam was stopped because the NSITF did not obtain a permit to hold the exercise and the agency also failed to control the over 1,200 participants. The Nigerian government has announced that it has set up a joint committee to investigate concerns related to the issues raised by the Senior Staff Association Nigerian University, SANU, and the Non-Academic Staff Union of Allied and Education Institute, NASU, over payment anomalies. The FG disclosed this in a statement after the Minister for Labor and Employment, Dr. Chris Ngige, led a meeting between the federal government and members of the unions. The minister added that the joint committee would be made up of the unions and members of the government side, which would work in harmony to ensure that those anomalies in payment complaints by the union were treated to the satisfaction of concerned parties. He added that the federal government launched a bigger committee to formalize the allowances that had been granted to all the unions in the university system, academic and non-academic, citing the need for uniformity in the earned allowances in the university system. 
The Owaron Shaki bound lane of the third mainland bridge will be closed totally to vehicular movement by midnight on Saturday, February 6 till 7 p.m. on Sunday, February 7, to remove the last expansion joint on the lane. According to a statement released by the Ministry of Transportation on Wednesday, the closure is vital to enable the contractor to move its equipment to the Owaron Shaki bound lane within the given period without any interruption. The Commissioner for Transportation, Dr. Frederick Oladende, stated that the rehabilitation process was being done assiduously to ensure set deadlines were met. River State Governor Yesom Wiki has condemned the posture of some state and ethnic groups that suggest that they own the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. According to him, the commission belongs to all states in the region and that no one particular ethnic group could assert itself as the dominant owner of the commission. The governor made the declaration when he played host to the Interim Management Committee of NDDC on courtesy visit to Government House in Fort Chacot. Wike said members of these groups always kicked against the appointment of people to head the commission because they felt such persons were not from core Niger Delta states, which he stated must stop. Quoting him, anybody can be appointed in Niger Delta. There are people who believe that if they appoint somebody from Edo or Cross River State, for example, they say no, that those people are not the core Niger Delta states. We must have to stop that. NDDC does not belong to any ethnic group in the Niger Delta region. It does not belong to anybody. The governor challenged the new interim leadership to be determined to make a difference, change the current narrative of the commission, serving outsiders' interests and abandoning its core mandate of developing the region. You are watching TOS National News on TOS TV. Still ahead, business and entertainment. <laughs> The federal government, in collaboration with the World Bank, have commenced the process to rebase Nigeria's gross domestic product. In its bid to rebase Nigeria's GDP, the National Bureau of Statistics spokesperson Ichedi Sunday said in a statement issued in Abuja that the objectives of the National Business Sample Survey include to rebase the gross national product from 2010 to 2018 and 2019. It also is to provide sectorial data at national and state levels, determine the structure of the Nigerian economy, determine the sectors that drive the Nigerian economy and those that require government inter intervention to improve them. Others, he said, were to serve as a benchmark for subsequent commercial and industrial sector statistics surveys. As part of general rule for collective investment scheme, CIS, released by the Security Exchange Commission, SEC, on Wednesday, the Commission has directed that all units of securities of a collective investment scheme shall be registered by the Commission. The rule, which is on the SEC's website, also states that all units of securities subject to registration by the Commission may be offered through the following methods, offer for subscription, offer for sale, Units and securities of a collective investment scheme may be registered by way of shelf registration. SEC, SEC explained that shelf registration is a filing undertaken by issuers intending to access the market in the near future. It permits issuers to disclose certain information in a core disclosure document that is updated on a regular basis. The SEC stated that all shelf documents are expected to be made accessible to the public at the office or on the website of the fund manager or promoter. And on the entertainment scene, Nollywood comedy blockbuster movie Omoghetto, the saga by filmmaker Funke Akindele Belo, popularly called Jennifer, has become the first to cross 500 million naira in Nigerian box office. The Cinema Exhibitors Association of Nigeria, CEN, recently announced that the movie has become the highest grossing Nollywood movie. According to the CEN report, the movie, which has maintained the number one spot for six weeks in a row, has broken Nollywood's box office record with a com revenue of 501,449 
501 million rather, 449,050 naira. The latest record comes barely a week after it surpassed Kemia Deitibas, the wedding party, smashing its four year record. The movie, which is a sequel to 2010 trilogy Omogetho, the story of Shalewa, aka Lefty, that's from K. Akindele, was released on Christmas Day in 2020. You are still watching TOS National News on TOS TV. Still ahead, sports. <laughs> Welcome back and to sports with high level of uncertainty still surrounding the commencement of the 20th National Sports Festival in Edo State. The main organizing committee, MOC, has directed all states to reduce the number of teams for the Games. A letter from the Sports Ministry in Abuja dated February 1st, 2021, directed that only teams that finished first at the zonal qualifiers will be allowed to feature at the festival. The letter, signed by the Secretary of the MOC, Peter Nelson, stated, Accordingly, only one team, that is the team that plays first at the zonal eliminations, shall represent a zone in each team. Sport at the 20th National Sport Festival in order to reduce the number of participants. The festival, which has suffered a series of postponements, is expected to hold from February 14 to 28 in Benin City. The Nigeria Basketball Federation, NBBF, has expressed optimism that there is no cause for alarm following the draws that pits the Tigress against world number one USA, France and 2020 Olympic host Japan, which many described as the group of death. Reacting to the draws conducted on Tuesday, the NBBF president, engineer Musa Kida, said all the 12 teams at the Olympics have a reasonable chance of winning the tournament. Hence, there are no minnows. He believes a lot can happen between now and when the Games tips off, capable of upsetting bookmakers' predictions and the fate of teams. We have to be focused on what we have to do as a federation with the help of the federal government of Nigeria through the Ministry of Sports to ensure we adequately prepare the team, get the right personnel for the challenges ahead. The Olympics game will be held between 23rd of July and 8th of August 2021 after its initial postponement due to COVID-19. And that is the national news on your digital affairs from African News Network. For more updates, visit www.tostvnetwork.com. Do follow and like TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. Do stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS TV Network. I am Adesua Osui. Bye for now.